Welcome everyone to the Quad City Botanical Center. I'm Greg Wolf, environmental educator. We're going to take a tour of our sun garden. It's home to tropical plants throughout the world. So we're gonna see some interesting plants today and give you a little information about them. Let's go for a walk. All right, follow me this way. Oh my, let's start here. Look above here. This is a staghorn fern. Staghorn ferns are a common fern in tropical rainforest. And they basically make two kinds of leaves. The ones that are green are to produce their spores. And as you see, if you get a close look up at the brown part, those are the spores that will finally just come off and float and attach to the bark of other trees. The second leaf is one that kind of makes a pot and somewhere for it can live and collect water. And this is a very successful adaptation that this plant has. Let's go find another one. All right. Get up here and get a close look. Go up and take a look. Do you see it? This is a banana plant. This is a red obsidian banana. There are over a thousand species of banana plants throughout the world. We eat one species. This is one that is normally a cooking banana. And as you see, it only produces so many rows of bananas, which is called a hand. And each banana is a finger. And then it will send its stalk and still produce and make flowers. And it has a protective covering, a red bracket, that when it's ready to bloom, will come up to show the flowers. Believe it or not, the flowers are edible. In countries that it actually grows, they take it and they eat the flowers. All right, wonderful plant. It feels like it's fake, but it's not. This is uh, the second largest herbaceous plant you can find, the tallest. The tallest will be coming up. Follow me. Whew, it's hot in here. Oh my gosh. All right. Because you know all these tropical plants love heat. This is a wonderful flower. This one is a tropical plant that we call a lollipop plant. Because it reminds you of a dreamsicle, a lollipop. And that's where it gets its name from. Blooms several times a year in our sun garden. Oh my, we have a tree here. If you like chocolate, these are the trees it comes from. These trees, the old bromo cacao, will produce these pods. And usually it's on old growth. So you can actually have them growing on the trunk. If you look up there, they're yellow now probably ripe for the picking. Unfortunately, we only have two. And if you look at this, a pod that was previously grown here, there's maybe a dozen seeds in it. In the wild, they're the size of a football and they'll have 35 to 40 seeds. Do you know how many seeds it takes to make one pound of chocolate? 400. All right, so these guys were originally found in the Amazon in, in Brazil. Now, chocolate has spread throughout the world in the tropical areas. The biggest producers are now in Africa. All right, let's go see. Oh my gosh. 
If you guys like your cinnamon toast crunch, the best part's the cinnamon, right? Well, cinnamon comes from a tree. Now, this one looks like a bush. It's not very tall. It can grow very tall. And if you look right here, you can see it darkening up. This is the bark. And what they do is they will strip the bark off and make these little ringlets of it, the cinnamon sticks. And they'll either sell it like this in smaller pieces or grind it up for, for our enjoyment. So when you say go eat some bark, just grab for your cinnamon. All right, let's come back here. Oh my God. Look at this tall plant. You would think it's a tree. It is not. This is a fishtail palm. And palms are the largest herbaceous plant. They are not a tree. Right now, you can see that it's producing its fruit. And it kind of looks like large grapes. But this is where they get the palm oil from. Uh-oh, I see a friend of ours in here. Shh, be very quiet. In my hand, I have an American toad. And they like coming in here. So this is an American toad. Very common, you can find in your back gardens. They're great to have in your gardens. They eat a lot of your insects. But this one's a girl. This is a female. And you go, well, how do you know that, Mr. Greg? If you look in the chin, if it's not black, it's a female. If it's this white color, now a male will have a black chin. And if I'm lucky, I might find a male. Eureka, I did. So if you look at its throat right there, it has black on it. Yeah, I know. I'll put you down in a second. I got to show the kitties this. All right. So, usually the males are smaller and the females are, are a little bit larger. But you can see the difference in their throats. I better let them go. Have fun. Our next plant is something you can find in our grocery stores one of our tropical fruits. You follow this trunk up. And see at the top. You see it? There's some flowers and the start of a little fruit. This is papaya. Papaya is a wonderful delicious fruit. It's orange inside with tiny little black seeds. And this will produce quite a few. All right, let's continue to explore. On the vines, philodendrons. Fruit of paradise. A red leaf philodendron. Oh no, we have found another one of our friends. If you look on the trunk right here. That is a gray tree frog. Now they're native to this area as well, but they love it in here. Beautiful calls at night. I'll just leave him alone. Looking over. I found something else that you probably didn't know. Do you guys eat cheese? 
yellow cheese, orange cheese. Do you know that's a color they add to the cheese? That is actually from the annatto tree. And if you look up there, you can see the seed pods. If you look on the ingredients of your cheddar, your Kobe, you'll find a natto in there. What they do is they take these orange seeds to colorize our cheese. It's kind of nice to have something natural. This is also used to color lipstick and other products throughout the world. Now let's look. Now this next thing is a tree that if I didn't have it in the morning, I'd go crazy. It'll wake you up. Did you guess? Yes, coffee. Now, this is our coffee tree. Now, an interesting thing, there are actually two kinds of coffee that is grown, and it's Robusta, which is found in, in South America. And then, that's only 30% of our coffee. And then, Arabian coffee is 70% is what we probably have in our store. This is an Arabian, it'll produce some red berries. Those red berries have a little pit, very similar to a cherry. And it's a seed inside that they use. So here is some fruit that I picked and dried. Of course, it's not red, but imagine it being red. That's when they pick it. Then the bean is dried and it looks like peanuts, but it's not. Um, what they will do is then they'll roast it. That's when we get the smell. And this is what we'll find in our grocery stores, either as a full bean or as it grounded up. Now, coffee was first found in Ethiopia. That's in Africa. Now, the majority of our coffee that's produced, can you imagine which continent? South America, you're right. So, South America is our biggest producer of coffee. Uh, Ethiopia is where it originated from, but it was brought over to many different um, places. Jamaica, the English brought coffee trees to Jamaica. So that's where they got their trees. So that's an amazing half of our sun garden. We're gonna do the next batch here in a second.